Hey guys, welcome back to Technologic. In this video, we'll be benchmarking Windows 10 and Windows 11 to see if there's a performance difference between the two. Should you upgrade? Continue watching to find out. Let's go. As it is known that Intel is not too affected by Windows 11, we will be putting AMD to the test today. Before we begin, I would like to thank Aftershock for lending me one of their PCs to do the tests. Firstly, let's take a look at the specs of the PC. This is Aftershock's Rapid Gaming PC and it is their entry-level chassis for gaming PCs. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 3600 which has 6 cores and 12 threads. This is a budget-friendly CPU and still performs decently in games. For the graphics card, we have a Radeon RX 6600 XT GPU from Gigabyte. Moving on, we have 16GB of DDR4 RAM from Clev. For storage, I have two identical Samsung Gen 4 SSDs, one with Windows 10 and one with Windows 11. I have installed the same games and benchmarks on both of them. With that, let's move on to the games and benchmarks. For the games, I ran them at 1080p medium to high settings. The screen was also being recorded during these tests. I also used MSI Afterburner to overclock the GPU slightly on both Windows versions. First, we have GTA 5. I set everything to maximum and ran the inbuilt benchmark. From the log files, the Windows 11 average FPS were consistently 10 to 20 FPS more than the Windows 10 average FPS. This is about a 7 to 10 percent lead for Windows, which is a nice start. Next, we have Minecraft with intense shaders, with fast graphics and a render distance of 16 chunks. I got an average FPS of about 70 in Windows 10 and about 80 in Windows 11. While the FPS in Windows 11 did drop to about 70 sometimes, Windows 11 still has the lead in this game. Without shaders, Windows 10 got me consistently above 250 FPS, but Windows 11 gave me over 320 FPS. This is a massive lead for Windows 11 and it seems that Microsoft has made some improvements for gaming, at least for the game they own. For Call of Duty Warzone, both operating systems managed to get extremely similar results of about 90 to 100 FPS. These FPS are for maximum settings in this game, which is nice. You can reduce the settings a little bit for smoother gameplay. However, this is where Windows 11 stops winning. For Fortnite on high settings, Windows 10 managed to hit FPS of over 160, while Windows 11 struggled to keep up at above 120 FPS. I thought this might be because of map differences but I tried this multiple times and I got the same result. Next, we have the benchmarks. For Cinebench R20, Windows 10 got an average score of 3562, which is about 80 points more than Windows 11's average score of 3486. For Cinebench R23 on the other hand, Windows 11 takes back the crown in a 3 minute test with a score of 9005 when compared to Windows 10's score of 8990. For Corona 1.3, both operating systems rendered it at about 2 minutes and 40 seconds with race per second of about 3 million. For all these tests, both Windows 10 and Windows 11 were not very different, which is nice. However, for Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve, I got a score of 830 on Windows 10 and a score of 743 on Windows 11. This is more than a 10% difference, so video editing and rendering might be slower on Windows 11. Overall. It seems there are some games that take advantage of Windows 11 while some are negatively affected by it. However, it is nice to see that most of the problems that Windows 11 had with AMD processors are now much better. With that, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!